Bob, you open it up, open it up with the opening statement, just about you know looking forward to Saturday and how the week has gone. Yeah, I know our, our football team and our staff is excited for Saturday's game at 8 o'clock at Joe I.A. Stadium and the home opener. And I look to have a great crowd. I think it's been a long time since we've last played. And I think uh, our football team is much improved. Our guys have put a lot of work in throughout the course of the summer. Um, a lot of the new transfers have, have really done a great job of coming in and integrating themselves into what we've already established you know, from last year and the, and the foundation that we built since we were here in January. And I think a lot of the, the guys that stayed the course um, that stayed with us through January, through February, and, and guys that went through last season. I think a lot of those guys are really going to be the rocks, I think, that um, move us forward uh, in addition to the guys that we have here. So it's an exciting time of year. Um, I know everybody's looking forward to the first games and, and getting the season going. Um, and, and I'm just excited for our football team to get out in front of a great crowd on Saturday night and to compete in a conference opener um, with a lot on the line you know, against FIU, a, a good team that beat us last year at their place. And, and I know Coach McIntyre and his staff have done a great job with those guys as well. And, and and then I know, uh, um, so looking forward to it um, as far as our players and our staff of getting this 2023 season going. As you look at them, I think they still haven't even named a starting quarterback yet. Is it pretty much that we just have to go look at the film from last year? Is that what you can really do at this point? Yeah, I think so. I think Grayson James has played a lot of football. He had a great game against us last year. Um, I know they're really excited about Jenkins, the young freshman. Um, so we anticipate, based off of all the reports and things we've seen, him playing as well and, and getting a, a series. How much that is, I don't know. But um, you have to prepare for both. Um, and, and so defensively, it'll present a lot of problems. And, and you know, I know Coach Power and, and his staff have done a very good job. And you just have to be able to, you know, to feel your way through the first quarter and adapt and adjust on defense and offense to maybe some new wrinkles or some new personnel that, that didn't quite show up on the depth chart. Sonny, what are the unknowns for you guys? Well, I, I think defensively on the defensive line, you know, the depth there, um, being able to, to create a pass rush there. Um, defensively, our linebackers, we have a lot of new players in addition to Hugh Davis. Um, I'm very excited about watching those guys compete on Saturday night. Um, I'm very excited about watching Miles Hurd in the secondary compete, Cecil Singleton, um, the improvement that he's made to Marcus Griffin Taylor, a guy that's really turned heads throughout the course of fall camp and spring since he's been here. So um, those are some of the things that you look for offensive line wise. You know, um, you know, Abe Delphin coming back from his injury, you know, and, and being able to get back going to his his playing shape. It's been a while since he's played. Excited to see Hank lead our offense and, and guys like Smoke Harris and Cyrus Allen going out and make plays, our tight ends. Um, I'm excited about them. And, and so um, running back, you know, you have a little bit of question mark there in terms of your, your depth and, and the injuries that we've had. Uh, but I think Coach Veal has done a good job of preparing all those guys to, to be able to step in and, and to be productive players and to play well. because. We talk about it a lot of, all the time. I mean, everybody can play. We can put anybody in the game, and they can play. Um, but we want to put them in the game, and they play well. And so it's our job to prepare them, and, and it's their job to take the coaching and teaching and, and go out there and, and do that. I'm curious with the veteran quarterback guy, Tony, the give and take between you and him in terms of what he likes, what he wants in the game plan. Is it a little different than perhaps having a quarterback that doesn't have the experience that he does? Yeah, I think that you have to have a very you know, open line of communication as far, especially when you get to this time of the week in the game plan of things that you like, things that you don't like. And when we're trying to narrow it down between this play or that play or this concept, you know, really, all right, what do you like, you know, from that standpoint, asking him. And because and, ultimately the, the players are the ones going out there and they have to be comfortable with it. And I think Hank's been in our system long enough. We've got enough volumes of reps and the different concepts that we use that I think he has a certain comfort level with things. Um, and so, you know, being able to, to put those guys out there in positions to be successful. And, and uh, he's played a lot of football. And so that's what's exciting. But he also hasn't played since, you know, October. And I think it's important to remember that. And um, there's a lot of new faces, but there's also a lot of players that have a lot of career snaps. And so that's what I'm excited about. And Hank's one of those guys also. You know, it'll still be game time decision, I think, with Tyree. You know, I think it'll be how it goes this week, and, and we'll just see the rest of the practice and kind of how he feels. Any questions from, on Zoom? Yeah, Coach, obviously you, you've been in the world of college football a long time. What, what, what's this week like for you uh, just leading up to that first game? Is, is it something that you try to keep a routine with your guys, or can you kind of sense some of the excitement? I think you definitely sense the excitement. I think the sense the excitement and the emotion that our players are getting excited that the game's here and they want to play. And, and you know, we've got to continue to hone in on the execution in terms of our practice execution, um, ultimately making that our game day reality. And, and so we've got to really hone that in. You know, I think just keeping guys on a routine, it's a little bit different because you've had, you know, really 
probably two weeks to prepare for this first game, almost like a bye week, really, um, and coming off of fall camp. And, and so um, they're excited. They're ready to play. Um, but we just have, a, you know, to, to execute better in practice, um, get them on a routine. And then also, you know, your first game, there's a lot of checklists that you have to make sure from a – just from a staff, a new staff, and, um, you know, with some of the new guys on our staff that, that came in and, and, you know, with the new players. Um, they're not taking anything for granted just from making sure we go over, you know, pregame warm-ups, you go over, you know, what it's like at the hotel on Friday, you know, Saturday. We're going to have a long day at the hotel, um, 8 o'clock kickoff. And so being able to make the, the most of our time there. And I know it's an exciting weekend, too, um, unveiling um, Champions Plaza. Um, and so I'm looking forward to really what that brings into our community in Ruston and just the highlighting, um, you know, six individuals who've made such an impact um, at Louisiana Tech and obviously um, far beyond Louisiana Tech in the world of athletics. And to have them honored uh, Friday night um, with the unveiling of their statues, I think is going to be incredible and, and it gives us the momentum um, for this home opener also. Any questions? So Michael Bouchard is the second nickel on this team, true freshman, I guess. Like, what's he done since he's gotten here, I guess, to be you know, in that position? Yeah, Mike, Mike, um, he's done a great job since he got here in the spring. I think that's why you want to try to get sometimes high school kids, um, the right ones to graduate early, to get in your program, and, and to be able to – And because if at the end of spring, he wasn't the two. Um, and and that, that's why you come early. It's because fall camp, you can start making those strides. And he's done that. He's picked up the game. He's played probably two to three different positions for us in our secondary. Um, and so he's been very involved there. And, and uh, you know, he's a mature kid, you know. And, and so I, I'm excited to see him play. I know special teams, he's really going to help us and impact us. And, and I think he's got a bright future. Um, and and uh, Coach Johnson and Coach Power, they've done a good job of, of, of teaching him as he's moved around to different spots within our secondary.